All right, this is it, people. Let's move. Let's go, 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 go. Hello and welcome back to my channel. I am Annabella Sasha and thank you for joining me today. I decided let's make another video, but let's give it a little bit more chaos. I decided to do a video essay commentary on all things Bridgerton books, the show, all the characters, things that, you know, happen, predictions for seasons to come. This isn't going to be a direct summary of everything that's happened. I included the ones I thought that were important or that I remembered. There are some people who are missing, but it's because I don't remember them because there's a big debate online on whether or not the books are better than the show. I don't know why we heard the debate this show is better so to start off let's really explain ourselves because it's gonna be confusing the blue line is season one red line which you see everywhere over here season two orange line means that they're related periwinkle i don't even know what color it is periwinkle line that means that they could be together it's assumed based off of the books so the first thing we're going to get into is season one season one is based off of the first book by julia quinn the duke and i let's start off the show is about, it's called bridgerton it's about the bridgerton siblings so we have edmund and violet they got married they had eight kids we have anthony who's the oldest benedict second oldest colin then we have daphne eloise then we have gregory hyacinth francesca season one starts and edmund's gone okay he's dead from the job we already know that anthony is lord bridgerton because of the fact that edmund's gone because he's an eldest son Daphne, it's her first season. The season in London is like, you're going out to parties to find a husband or a wife. So Daphne, it's her first season. This is contrary to the books. In the books, it's her actual second season when she's going out. One of my beloved characters, the queen, okay? This baddie be up here, okay? She is not in books. She kind of pushes the plot forward, which is more interesting. The queen has a thing where like all the ladies of the season come and greet her and she has to pick her diamond of the season. So she's presented in front of the queen and the queen's like, bestie, you're my diamond. Anthony is trying to find Daphne and husband, but he's not thinking about her feelings at all. We hate Anthony at this point in season one. He's trash. He looks good in this picture, but in season one, he had sideburns that looked like leg warmers. He was getting evil mean character vibes of an older brother. He basically did not anybody who tries to talk to Daphne he's like nope they're not good for you nope blah 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 so Daphne's having a hard time finding anybody to even have interest in her because her brother keeps blocking her let's go to like the other siblings okay we got Eloise Eloise she's not about that marriage life she wants to go to school but it's 800 so like bestie can't go to school because women, women don't have rights but that's all you need to know they're besties okay they have known each other since they were kids she wants to go to school and Penelope is like girl okay I support your dreams. Keep dreaming, girl. Colin, the nice brother. That's all we know. Benedict, he's a weird, most adorable way possible. Love him. Cutie. These three, they're barely in the story, which is why they're not really going to talk about in this presentation. Over here, we have the Featheringtons. We have Lord Featherington, Lady Featherington, Prince and Philippa Featherington, Philippa Featherington, obviously. The mom, she's trying to get all her kids to be married this season. She's giving um, Christian vibes. Penelope is the youngest, and she is oftentimes pushed away or not seen in the way that they are. They're very fat towards her. Are we going to pretend? Are we really going to be delusional pretend like Penelope is one of the previous girls here? Like, the queen is married to King George. I'm all over the place i apologize he's black which is the reason why there are a lot of minority characters that are leads and that are playing like these big roles because racism doesn't exist anymore i mean it doesn't not exist but like they're kind of like we've solved the problem boom and so that's the reason why we have so many people of color in the show so we have an introduction of a character as daphne's going through her troubles we introduced simon hastings the duke simon's introduced as being lady danbury's godson lady danbury is an iconic character i literally want to be her i love her so much she helped simon when he was younger because simon grew up with a stutter he didn't speak very well his dad hated his dad so much his dad's not on here i'm not kidding his dad i don't want to see that man's face his dad was mean and terrible his mom died giving birth to him dad basically like sent him away he's like his mom the substitute mom okay he comes back into town to visit her and he goes to these balls the mamas are like talking about him and they're like i want my daughter set up with him he's annoyed by it another big thing that i literally forgot that's like so important i don't know why i forgot this we have lady also now she's literally the narrator of our story she is about this we don't know who she is she writes a gossip column she's basically a gossip girl and she openly talks trash about everybody and period because a lot of these characters are trash lady Embry is a mystery in season one eloise wants to know who lady Embry is because eloise wants to be liberated she wants to go to school she wants to educate herself and to her lady Embry is an example of a woman who is liberated that's eloise's main focus in season one simon and Daphne meet up. Anthony and Simon went to school together. <gasps> Brother's best friend show? I saw that coming, but okay. Anthony's like, stay the hell away from her. <laughs> he doesn't 
say that, but like you could read the vibes, all right? Because he knows Simon, and Simon's a rake. A rake is literally, literally another version of a man who like gets around a lot. And skipping forward, what you basically need to understand is Daphne's tired of her brother blocking her from being able to find a guy, and Simon also was tired of all the ladies coming up to him. He actually says at the beginning, he never wants to fall in love, he never wants to get married, he wants to be a duke and die. He doesn't want to have kids. So these two, after talking a bunch of times, come up with a plan. They're like, you know what? What if we fake dating? Fake dating, fake dating trip. Come on, we've seen it before. We love it. That way, more people would be interested in her, and the girls would be like, oh, he's not available. Everyone believes it. Violet is so happy, and so is Lady Amber, because Lady Amber's like, oh, he actually likes somebody? These two are the only ones who know that it's a lie. Anthony, he's mad. And Anthony wants her to be with this man named Lord Burbrick. I didn't include him. The sight of him makes me want to vomit. Like, I can't look at that man without getting the creeps. And Daphne doesn't like him. And Simon knows that Daphne doesn't like him. Simon also doesn't like Lord Burp. He's literally trash, is the one. Like, that's all I would say. He's also worse in the books, like, in the books. Like, it's so bad. Anthony has a thing for this girl named Sienna. She's an opera singer. She's not of the same class as him. The mom finds out and is basically like, you can't be with her. And he's like, mm. And they have a thing going back and forth where it's like, oh, well, they will they. But it's honestly suffocating and tired, okay? Benedict meets a painter. He's a really good artist, right? He meets a painter who inspires him and brings him to these like art nights where people like are like naked and they take and they like paint each other like figure paintings and like get the, the little the inkling that Benedict is not straight but you know they quickly squash that down even though he's not like you can't tell me he is. Eloise, she is still looking for Lady Whistledown. Penelope is kind of tired of hearing it but she's like okay. Lady Whistledown talks about the queen in, in her writings and says oh maybe the queen doesn't know how to pick the diamond of the season. The queen is like no on my watch. Don't be don't fucking do rude. Are you kidding me? I stop, swear to God, stop. don't be fucking what rude. You throw doing? the thing on me. I'll fucking hurt you. Don't do that. Stop. Oh my God. Oh my fucking God. Bitch. The queen, follow me, follow me. <laughs> Recruits Eloise. But she's basically like, you're gonna find out Lady Whistle Down is. We're gonna crack the case wide open. We go to Miss Marina Thompson. Miss Marina Thompson is brought into the season. I don't even know. It's pissed me off. Like, she's in the books as well. Like, I'm so annoyed with her. My sister says she has a stoppable face. Anyway, Marina Thompson, she has something wrong to be honest. I just don't like her for some reason. She comes into the scene. She's related to Lord Featherington. Her and Eloise bond pretty quickly. She has a lover. He's in the war. I forget his name. His last name is Crane. That's all I know. And she catches the eye of. Follow me, follow me. Boom, 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 boom. Colin Bridgerton. <laughs> Alex is cute, he thinks she's cute, and this is a problem, you know why? Because Penelope is in love with Colin. Best friend's brother trope? Again. So she knows Colin more than most people because of the fact that she, those two grew up together, so she was always around Colin, in love with him, and it's so obvious, but Colin is really dumb because he doesn't pay attention to the sign. Bessie's pregnant, but Bessie's not married, so that's not good because we're in the 1800s. Lady Featherington basically tells her, Bessie, you need to find a husband or I'm throwing out the streets. She is looking for a husband for her now, like, and finds like the, the, the most ugly gross old man and he, she's like they'll get married to you she wants to her she's kind of giving like mean vibes she has to find a husband quick because she's gonna start showing her with her baby soon Penelope is trying to help her make sure she doesn't get married to some old scrooge nasty man okay Daphne and Simon are getting closer and then Simon's all like bestie like I don't like you anymore we're not friends and then we're, and then we're all like having a flash because we're like what the hell are you talking but it's because Simon is slowly having feelings for Daphne, but he knows that he can't give her a family and kids, which is all she cares about. All she wants is a family and kids. Her as a character, I don't, I'm a little bit bored by her. Like, I'm not gonna lie. And same with Simon. I'm a little bit bored. Like, oh, like, oh. He, he's mean to her for her, like, no reason. Like, whiplash. It's literally whiplash. And he's, she's like, okay, well, we're not friends anymore then. And then they just stop talking to each other. And then Violet's like, what's going on? And then Lady Amber's like, what's going on? And then we're all like, yeah, what is going on? The prince, okay, is a prince of Prussia. And he is related to the queen. The queen wants to prove that Daphne is in fact the diamond of the season to make sure the lady who whistled down shuts the hell up in her papers. And so she's like, here's the prince, Daphne, be with him. And Daphne's in her baddie bee. Batty B mood. Have you ever seen that scene where she comes down the stairs with her little fan and she's, oh, her hair's all dolled up, like with the feathers? She's in her Batty B. She's mad at him. So she's like, you know what? I will, I will charm the prince because you know what? I think I like him. And then Simon's in the corner being all pouty, being like, bro, I messed up. You are dumb. Moving on. And we have Cressley Cowper, a character I have not mentioned yet. She's a nasty, nasty, nasty girl. Because this little thing she says is really out of pocket. And I'm not talking about the show, I'm talking about the books. Anyway, she's mean. She wants to be with 
But Prince, Anthony's dealing with problems with Sienna again, where they keep breaking up, getting back together. Although Anthony can't emotionally connect because his dad died, so like he has trauma. He needs therapy. His mom wants him to get married, by the way. He doesn't want to get married. Again, he doesn't. Like this guy, they both have daddy issues. They're both like afraid to love. Like, yeah, okay. Daphne knows that he's gonna get a propose to her. She gets stressed out, okay? She goes into the garden to like, take a breather and so she runs into the garden and is like leaving me he's like Miss Burton, Miss Burton. it's literally a whole thing and he kisses Daphne it's like ah, they're in the garden they're unchaperoned and they kissed this is very very bad also another thing to note she had a run-in with, with Nigel Burbrook but she punched him in that run-in Simon saw Anthony doesn't know about this until much later but he doesn't believe her until Simon like backs her and is like, yeah, Simon Nigel Burbrook put his hands on Daphne. Like that's another reason why I don't like you. Like you are a menace. Anyway, so my opinions will change with a lot of these characters as we get to season two. So they kiss, right? Anthony sees this. Anthony punches him. They're all like, and he says, you'll have to get married now. And then he's all like, no. And then he's all like, okay, we're gonna duel a dawn. She's all like, what? Why don't you just marry me instead of dueling me? He's like, I can't marry you. And she takes it as like, he really is not into me. Whereas his is that he doesn't want to make it married to her because he doesn't have kids. And then he says, I can't have kids. He says that I can't have kids. Not I won't, but I can't. So she takes that as, oh, there's something wrong with his little, his little bajanga jank. Because what else would she think? And also, Miss Daphne doesn't know anything about sex. Women in this time period are like repressed in so many ways. And they're not taught, taught anything about sex. They're taught to be taught about sex from their husbands, which like plays a lot of role into why like the first book is really problematic for me. But like, Moving on. Lady Featherington is having issues with money with Lord Featherington. It's the next day. Simon, Anthony, ready at dawn. While they're like literally holding their guns at each other, ready to duel, she shows up with a, on a horsey, nays into the scene, and she literally like charges in between like an idiot and almost gets shot. She falls off her horse and was like, Daphne, are you dead? And like, no, she's not dead. She's still alive. She's all like, stop this. I will marry you. Just, we'll get married. It's fine. And he's like, no. Like, I'll marry you anyway, even if you can't have kids. So now he feels like she's settled and she feels like she's okay with it because she has feelings for them anyway. And I don't know, Simon, he just pisses me off. I know like a lot of people loved him in season one. He's kind of like, he manipulated her a lot by not telling her certain things. I'm not being able to have kids. He also didn't open up and share about why that happened. Like a lot of it has to do with his dad and the way his dad treated him. But like, oh, we're gonna keep going, we're gonna keep going. We're only on season one, bruh. Anyway. <laughs> These two get married real quick. Their their wedding is really sad. Like they're leaving, show, nobody show, shows up except for the family. And Runa's like, Colin is the perfect person to get married with really quickly because he's a virgin, he has money, and he's really nice, and he's not any of the old crappy people that Miss Play Veterans keep setting her up with. But Penelope, Penelope's like, no, <laughs> she's like, that's my man. She doesn't say that. I wish she would. But she didn't say that. They have a whole heated conversation, and Maria Thompson, her mean side comes out in this moment, which basically confirms that I knew all along that I didn't like her. She's just like, you're in love with him. I know that you're in love with him. You're a child. This is this grown ups talk. Blah, 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 blah. Go play. She gives that kind of vibe, that energy, like demeaning, putting her down kind of energy, which like pissed me off. Now, let's just skip forward. They get married. They hook up a lot. They're like, he's all like, I burn for you. And she's like, oh my gosh, sign up. He like admits that he likes her. They really like each other. But he never admits the reason why he doesn't want to have kids. And this is like a big fat problem for me. Like everyone, she thinks it's all happening right after not because they're together. And she's living in a mansion, a literal mansion. But it's problematic because he doesn't tell me the truth. And that's like really, really annoying. Okay, so moving, continuing forward. Benedict is still painting. He's still doing his, his thing. Colin gets engaged to Miranda Thompson. Anthony's not happy about this. And Penelope's also depressed because she's like, I love her. But I'm like, I feel so bad for my girl Penelope. I literally love her. I don't people hate Penelope, but I don't care. I love her to smithereens. But if he's keeping a secret that he's with somebody, everybody who's watching this show basically thinks he's secretly gay. Like, like what else would we think? And Ellie starts to think that Madame Delacroix is Lady Whistledown because it makes the most sense she's someone who can hide whatever her story is in her dress shop. I don't know, all of these come up with something, right? These two start to have mental issues because um, again, she knows nothing about sex and he used that to her his advantage. Then she finds his letters that he used to write to his dad, finds out that he actually had a stuttering issue growing up. His dad didn't love him, didn't treat him well. And they have a whole conversation and he basically admits that, yeah, it's not that I can't have kids, it's that I won't have kids because that's how I'm gonna get back to my dead dad. And we're all like, 
he's dead. So you're gonna just like be unhappy because he made you unhappy? Like, how are you winning in this situation? I was so bad. <laughs> I was so bad. Anyway, so she's kind of like mad right now and they have a big argument about it. And in the show, she pretends to be all like, I'm okay with this, even though she's not. She sexually assaults him. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's all the debate about that. That occurs because she wants kids. Told you that's her one motivation. <laughs> it's not so aggressive when I say that, but it like, it basically is. And he's all like, why would you do that? And then, and then they're like not talking again. Like their whole marriage from the jump is such a mess. They got married, like, uh, I, I don't care. I'm sorry, I don't care for them. Anyway, so she's hoping to get pregnant. He's all like, I'll support the baby, but I don't care. We're done, we're not together. And she's still like kind of sad about that. She's in her baddie pee about it. She like kind of regrets her decision, but like not enough for me to care about her as a character or feel bad or have any remorse for her, so I don't care. However, in the books, when she finds out about him deceiving her and not telling her the truth about the fact that he can't have kids, she's like, I'm never gonna sleep with you again because of the fact that you lied about this. And he threatens to rape her. Bitch, what the fuck? What the fuck? And I'm like, some people are really like, the books are better. Are they? Are they? Like, are you okay? Anyway, anyway. Moving on. And then she does the same thing she does in the show where she essays him and he's all like mad and yeah, she takes advantage of him. Boom, flash forward, find out she didn't get, she didn't get pregnant that time. So now she's depressed and Simon's all like, and I'm all like, Ugh. anyway, moving on. Penelope's jealous because those two are basically engaged. Soon enough, Lady Whistledown finds out that Bessie's pregnant. And now Maria Thompson's outed, Colin and her break off the engagement because he's all like, why would she lie to me? This is so embarrassing. And like, it's like, I don't care. She's hoping that her love, the guy who got her pregnant will come back to her. He's at war and he doesn't really answer the letters. Lady, Fa Lady Valerie Chen is a baby and she basically forges letters and says that the guy doesn't want her anymore. And so now she's all depressed and she tries to abort her baby with some specialty. It doesn't work. She's still pregnant and now she's depressed. Now we have this guy, Sir Philip Crane. He comes to the story, right? And he's the brother of the guy. We found out that the dude who she was in love with dies in war. And he's the brother. He comes in and he's like, I will marry you and take care of the baby because it's my brother's baby. And she's all like, no, like an idiot. Like, girl, you were looking for a man this entire time to take care of you and baby because women don't have any life, like rights or like any, any control over their own lives and bodies. Like, this is the perfect chance. She says no. Another reason why I don't like her. So wrapping up season one, Simon and Daphne end up having conversations about the whole thing with the kid and they end up fixing their own issues by like talking by him talking about his trauma as he should have from the beginning. It's absolute lunch. I'm sorry, I don't like Simon. I know people love him, but like <sighs> Anthony and Sienna are in love together. We found out that Benedict is having this secret relationship with Madame Delacroix. But we thought he was actually having a relationship with another man. It was actually her. Maria ends up getting married to the circle of Crane. She leaves the story. I don't want to see her again. I literally don't care. All right, then. What? Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Not you. You can choke. This was the first interaction. Colin is single still, and he ends up leaving to go to Greece. She ends up helping Lady Whistle Down get away without like realizing it, and then da da da, we get the big fat reveal. Lady Whistle Down is in fact. Penelope Netherington, we all saw this coming. If you didn't guess that when you were watching the show, you weren't paying attention. To be honest, it makes the most sense. She's always at the parties, always at these balls, the events, but she's never really involved. She's always someone who's like a wallflower because nobody really likes her or nobody like is into her, which makes no sense to me, like I love Penelope. But once you find that out, you realize that like Penelope actually ended up outing Miss Marina Thompson about her pregnancy. And that's like kind of shady and twisted. But like, I still love her. I'm sorry. Daphne, Simon, they have a baby. And then Lord Featherington dies. Like, his money troubles with gambling and like cheating people out get catches up to him and then he dies. Like, they don't really explain how he dies. He just dies. Or maybe they did and I wasn't paying attention. To be honest, I don't really care about this man. Let's wrap on season one and wrap on book one. Let's move on to season two.